Hello again and welcome back to Anthony Reads. Today I'm going to read one of my all-time, if not my all-time favorite Dr. Seuss books, The Lorax, which is also one of my favorite movies coming out August 3rd. And joining me, of course, is my little sweet pie, Joanna, who always is with me. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. The Lorax. At the far end of town, where the grickle grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no bird ever sing except old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. And in the deep, and deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax, and why was it here? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere? From the far end of town where the grickle grass grows, the old Wunsler lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the Wunsler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkim on the top of his store. He lurks in his lurkim cold under the roof where he makes his own clothes, the Wunsler. Out of miff muffled muff, and on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks, and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he'll let, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in fifteen cents and a nail, and the shell of a great-great-great-grandfather snail. And he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount. And he hides what you paid him away in his snuff, his secret strange glove in his groveless glove. And he grunts, I will call you by whisper my phone, for the secrets I tell you are for your ears alone. Slup, down slups the whisper of a phone to your ear, and the old onceler whispers are not very clear, since they have a long... They have to come down through a sniggerly hose, and he sounds as if he'd had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started a long time back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the songs of the swami swans rang in space, one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffle trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffle trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees I saw the brown barbalutes frisking about in their barbalute suits as they played in the shade and ate truffle fruits. From the rippleless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffle trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these, the touch of their tufts. One was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterly milk. And I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart, and I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. And in no time at all, I built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle a tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and a great speedy knee speed, I took the soft tuff and I knitted a sneed. The instant I finished, I heard a gazump, and I looked, and I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I'd chopped. It was sort of a man. Describe him? That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was brownish, and oldish, and shortish, and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am Dolorex. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out of my truffle of tuft? Look, Lorax, said I, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped down just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a sneed. A sneed's a fine something that all people need. 
It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sir, you are greedy. You are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. But the very same minute I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute a chap came along, and he thought that the need I had knitted was great, and he happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lorax, you poor stupid guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, said the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, built a radio phone, I put in a quick call. I called on my brothers and uncles and aunts and said, Listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche. Turn west at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. And in no time at all, in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeds as busy as beads in the sound of the chopping of the truffle trees. Then, oh, baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So quickly I invented my super axe hacker, which whacked off four truffle trees at one smacker. We were making sneeds four times as fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week... He knocked at my new office door. He snapped. I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the Barbaloots, who play in the shade in their Barbaloot suits and happily lived eating truffle of fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle of fruit to go round, and my poor Barbaloots are getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. They love living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the onceler, felt sad. But as I watched them all go, But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm, I most truly did not, but I had... To grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of the sneeds I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, and to the north. I went on biggering, selling more sneeds, and biggering my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax! <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He gargled, he sniffed. Wunsler! He cried with a crockless croak. Wunsler! You are making such smogless smoke. My poor swami swans, why they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. And so said the Lorax. Please pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. <coughs> Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you've smoggered up here. What's more, snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about the gluppity glup. Your machines clog chugs on day and night without stop making gluppity glup and schloppity slop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old once man, you. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them away. On, their future is dreary. They walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. Then I got mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap and say, bad, 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 bad. 
Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffle trees into thneeds, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an axe on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffle a tree of them all. No more trees, no more thneeds, no more work to be done. So in no time my uncles and aunts, every one, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke, smothered stars. Now all that was left neath the bad-smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance, and he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place, through a hole in the smog, without leaving a trace. And all the Lorax left there in this mess was a small pile of rocks with one word, unless... Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the onceler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you... Cares a whole awful lot. Nothing is going to get better. It's not. So! Catch! Calls the one slur. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the truffula. The last of the truffula seeds. And the truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula. Treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest. Protect it from axes that hack. And then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. Again, thank you very much for joining us. Be sure to tune in next time as I will read another story to you. Again, please make sure to leave feedback on both Facebook and YouTube. For Joanna Ventrillo, this is Anthony Ventrillo saying good night and goodbye.